Good morning, folks. New active region gobbling up nearby plasma filaments here. It's merely the beginning of a news day on eruptions, space phenomena, and the galactic trigger of Earth's catastrophe cycle. We begin at spaceweathernews.com, and we find the last 24 hours with little to target apart from the incoming bright active region. There are small patchy coronal holes at mid-latitude and the South Pole. While significant solar flares have stayed away, the X-ray flux remains up off the floor as plasma in the arching umbral field loops is accelerated to produce that emission. You can see here how much more detailed and fine the fields are than the plasma filaments we saw at the opening. The sunspot group itself is small, but definitively from cycle 25. This is the fourth appearance in just a few months after a deep multi-year minimum. The solar wind underwent an intensification event from a coronal streamer caught in a coronal hole stream. Even without high activity on the sun, we see blips and density variations within the solar wind. And as the next sunspot cycle ramps up, the coronal streamers thicken, and they can get caught in coronal hole streams. This can deliver both the density and speed increase during the stream impact, but the streamer magnetic character is always that of the previous solar magnetic sector, which means that minor instability is all we've had from an enduring intensified stream. Now let's take a quick look at the Blood Echo wind map at QuakeWatch.net. Same two areas on alert as before here. Papua alert shifting west a bit. Both areas overdue. And we've had a couple Blood Echoes near the Caribbean and Cocos plates as well, which play in the northern reach of South America too. Well, veterans of the channel know I don't think much of Yellowstone, but Santorini scares the bejesus out of me. They are pegging its last tremendous eruption now to 3,500 years ago, around 1500 BC, and state that it wiped out a tremendous amount of the life nearby. Well, speaking of eruptions, NASA's new Sunrise mission is going to get very low frequency shots of active regions. So low, the Earth's atmosphere usually blocks them out. I am hoping that between this and the new Chinese Solar Ring mission, we can finally put the question of electric current activity prior to major eruptive events to bed. We've seen the models. Now they're going to see if they are correct. Well, folks, some things in space just don't have great explanations. Some things in space can teach us about other things in space, even if they cannot be well characterized themselves. And one of these things in the plasma cosmology is gravitational lensing. We know the lensing-like features exist because we can see them in the cosmos in numerous places, but the cause of the lensing and how much it can really teach us is another thing. W first, one of my favorite underappreciated satellites in the era where Hubble, James Webb, and Tess get all the press and glory, is going to study micro versions of that lensing towards the galactic center. Link is below. We'll come back to plasma cosmology because one of my favorite articles in years just hit Princeton's blog, and we'll have to stop and check it out. Loners, self-sacrifice, dissenting behavior, genius-like self-separation from the herd. Turns out, it's not random. It's a function of intracellular communication in slime molds, where they look around and consciously decide to set themselves apart and not follow the rest of the group. Not only is this a ubiquitous feature, from humans to slime molds to wildebeest to locusts, but they say that when the catastrophic events hit species populations, it's the loners who survive and start anew. No metaphors in that one or anything. Anyway, back to plasma cosmology, and starting with the Field Standard Literature Review on Gamma Ray Dark Matter Searches and Milky Way Satellite Dwarfs. I'll save you the time. They found nothing. But another team has added to the mountain of evidence undercutting the galactic rotation problem. The globular clusters join a much more massive plasma halo and filament connection to the cosmic web in their circling around in co-rotation with the galaxy. I didn't think we needed that one, but we'll take it. And last but not least, as doubt as to the existence and recurring encounter with the galactic electric current sheet fades, it becomes critical to characterize that sheet. And since a Parker spiral includes large-scale forms of magnetohydrodynamic turbulence at the sheet, indeed we can expect a cosmic ray population trapped with the sheet, much like a solar energetic particle proton stream can reach its stream limit, but a larger punch is waiting when the shock wave arrives. Not like we didn't know this was coming, it's just sort of sobering to watch science confirm a theory, bit by bit, and let you know you didn't think it was scary enough along the way. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind map forecasts and shots of our star to close, and of course, we'll do this all again tomorrow, right here, but right now. It's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.